For the first few years, the zoo was a modest endeavor, beginning with just three deer in a fenced pasture. In 1902, the deer were joined by a few more Minnesota natives, elk, moose, and foxes. Former pets, like exotic birds and a monkey, were also donated by local citizens. In 1915, the beautiful glass and iron conservatory was built. It is still a showcase for tropical plants and flowers, but in its early years, it also served as winter quarters for some of the animals. During the Great Depression, the Works Progress Administration built several new facilities, including the main zoo building, the Bear Grottoes, and Monkey Island, which is now Seal Island. Como Zoo also acquired many exotic animals from the Longfellow Garden Zoo in Minneapolis when it closed in 1934. In the 40s and 50s, a kiddie zoo and amusement park rides were added. In 1955, after the St. Paul Zoological Society disbanded, city officials felt it was time to close Como Zoo. But citizen volunteers and a wealthy benefactor succeeded in keeping the zoo going. The next year, the first Sparky the Sea Lion show premiered and more animals arrived, including ostriches, jaguars, and baboons. In 1958, the first Siberian tigers to be successfully raised in captivity were born at Como, and Toby, the Galapagos tortoise, came to live in the main zoo building, where eager children waited for a chance to ride on his back. Toby retired to the Honolulu Zoo in 1974. In the 60s, as zoos became more important as protectors of endangered animals, officials determined that expanding Como into a major facility was not feasible. Planning began for a new zoo in Apple Valley, and once again, Como Zoo seemed headed for extinction. Citizens formed the Como Zoo Docent Association to help keep the zoo going, and in 1976, the state legislature approved $8.5 million to revamp the zoo. In the 80s, new, more spacious exhibits opened for the large cats, aquatic animals, seal island, primates, and African hoofed stock. In January 2005, the zoo will continue to evolve with the grand opening of the Visitor and Education Resource Center, which includes a tropical rainforest exhibit. Como Zoo has never charged admission, but in 2004, faced with city budget shortfalls, zoo officials began seeking donations from visitors, hoping to raise $95,000. They were in for a pleasant surprise. After just four months, volunteers had collected $320,000. Clearly, citizens recognize what a treasure this zoo is. Como Zoo has grown and changed in many ways, but one thing that never changes is the good time you'll have when you come to visit.